All right, so question A here, there's actually a few different ways of approaching it. I'm going to show you two of them. All right, so ABC is a triangle where the coordinates of A and C are 0, 6, and 4, 2, respectively. G, 2 over 3, 4 over 3, is the centroid of the triangle ABC. Now, remember centroid. What is a centroid? A centroid, centroid joins... It's a point of intersection of the lines that join the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. And I always remember it because of the OI and the OI there. So the centroid is the point of intersection. For example, just roughly, that's the centroid because it has joined the vertex, the, point, the midpoint on the opposite side and midpoint here join to the opposite side okay so whenever i get a question like this uh, i can leave that there for a second can't i whenever i get a question like this i generally look at it and go ag is inter intersects bc at the point p so bc down here has the midpoint p on it Okay, and it says AG to GP. If you were to make a little triangle out of it, you can see that it's split up and the ratio of two is to one. Okay, by this G here. So how far down have we actually gone? Okay, this was six. The y coordinate was 6. Now the y coordinate is 4 over 3. So 6, 4 over 3. You got to note that that is two thirds of the drop. There's one third left to go. So what's the difference between 6 and 4 over 3? The difference between 6 and 4 over 3. 6 minus 4 over 3 is equal to 14 over 3. Okay, so 2 thirds is equivalent to 14 over 3. We still have another 1 third of a drop to go. 1 third okay, is going to be 7 over 3. So we still have another drop of 7 over 3. So the y coordinate is going to be 7 over 3, no, pardon me, it's going to be 4 over 3, minus 7 over 3, which is minus 1. So I know the y coordinate is minus 1 here, okay, because I know it's going through it again. The drop down to there, the vertical drop was 14 over 3 and then to continue all the way down 7 over 3 now if you do something very similar for the x's it's gone to the right hasn't it okay so it's a little bit harder to show graphically here but it's gone it goes right it goes from 0 to 2 over 3 and that's going to be 2 thirds so um, it's increased, so I know two thirds of the increase because remember it was split in the ratio of two is to one. So two thirds of the increase is equal to two over three. It needs to go another one third across. So one third will be one over three. So I'm going to add on another one third onto that two over three, and I know the x coordinate two over three plus one over three is one. So the answer is going to be. For P, 1 minus 1. Now some people find that a little bit hard to follow, so I will actually explain it as well. Uh, using the formula from the log tables um, for the, the point dividing a line in a, ra in a given ratio. Okay, So I'm going to delete all of this, apart from the answer, and just going to keep that over on the side. Okay, so here's the formula from page 18 of the log tables. 
Okay, so it's we know that if we add a point A and a point P here, so let's call this x1, y1, this would be x2, y2, and the answer, if it was split up in a ratio of 2 is to 1, would be this point here. So A is equal to 2, B is equal to 1, because I know it's split up in a ratio of 2 is to 1. So filling in what I know then, B was 1, x1 is 0, plus 2 by x2, b which is 1, times 6, plus 2 times y2, all over 3 and 3, because you know it's 2 plus 1. And the answer should be what the centroid is. 2 over 3, 4 over 3. So we can see that 2, x2 over 3, this should be equal to this, 2 over 3. So it's clear to see that x2 is 1, because we can see 2x2 is equal to 2. I'm going to move it up a little bit. 2x2 is equal to 2, so x2 is going to be 1. And we can see that 6 plus 2y2 is equal to 4. 2y2 is equal to minus 2. y2 is equal to minus 1. So the answer for p is going to be 1 minus 1. Okay. So both ways gets you the right answer. The next question is really easy. So if we know where p is, it's here. 1 minus 1. It asks us to find the coordinates of B. So what's the mapping? Going from 4 to 1, it's minus 3 on the x's. We're going to go another minus 3 on the x's. So it's going to be 1 minus 3, which would be minus 2. And then another one on the y's. 2 to minus 1 would be minus 3 on the y's. Another minus 3 on the y's would be minus 4. Okay, so your answer for B is there. B is equal to that. Looking at the marks for that, your first question was 0, 4, 5, 10. And the next one was 0, 2, 4, 5. So lots of really nice, easy marks going there. I should say as well that for this question, there is another way of doing it. Okay, there's two other ways of doing it. But we're going to look at just using the midpoint formula. So we have the midpoint formula there. If we know that C, which was 4, 2, if we call 4, 2, x1, y1, we know that was C. We want to find B, and we don't know it. Let's call it x2, y2. But we know the midpoint. was 1 minus 1. Oh, how do I know it's the midpoint is kind of important to know as well. Going back to the centroid, okay, up here, the centroid and the midpoint. We know P will have to be the midpoint, so these two sections will have to be equal in length. Okay, so you can fill in um, what we know, x1, so it'll be 4 plus x2 over 2, 2 plus y2 over 2, and it should be equal to 1 minus 1. So over on the side, it's going to be 4 plus x2 over 2 should equal to 1. 4 plus x2 should equal to 2. x2 is equal to minus 2, which is what we had before. And we know 2 plus y2 over 2 should equal to minus 1, 2 plus y2 should equal to minus 2, y2 should equal to minus 4, which is again what we had. 
Next question asking us to prove that C is the orthocenter of the triangle. Okay, so back up to our diagram. I want to show that this is the orthocenter of the triangle. Okay, so to remind you what the orthocenter is, we're going to look at the construction for how to construct the orthocenter of a uh, triangle. Okay, so first of all, draw the perpendicular through A to the opposite side, so one point to the opposite side, now it has to be perpendicular down here. Now do it for one other side, so true a vertex and has to be perpendicular to the other side, it does not matter if it goes through the midpoint, it does not have to go through the midpoint. And this point in the middle here, if you did it to all three, would be the orthocenter. Now you don't actually need all to do it to all three. But what happens if I bring one of the vertices down? where the orthocenter is, no not that. What you'll find is if it's a right angle triangle, like it is right now, that the orthocenter is actually on one of the vertices at the right angle. Okay. So what we have actually, so if we go back and look at it, is what looks like a right angle here. So if this is a right angle right here, then C will also be the orthocenter. Okay, so what we have to just show is that there is a right angle that AC is perpendicular to BC. And we can do that by finding the slope of AC, the slope of BC, and then doing M1 times M2 is equal to minus 1 if they are perpendicular that would be true. So the slope of AC is 2 minus 6 4 minus 0 using the slope formula from the log tables which is minus 1. The slope of BC 2 plus 4 all over 4 plus 2 which is 1. Minus 1 times 1 is equal to minus 1. They're perpendicular Therefore, C is the orthocenter. Okay, and that was a 10 mark question. 0, 4, 5, 10. Maybe, maybe not the most accessible. But in general, the question, there's other ways around doing it. You could actually just go and find the orthocenter yourself the long way, as opposed to just proving it and showing it there. But in general, Quite a lovely um, coordinate geometry line question.